So I want to start by thanking everybody at the state for having us on this presentation. To me, it's such a great opportunity to tell this story in uh, this forum. Uh, it's a really unique situation. And, and again, very grateful for that we, we were given this, uh, this opportunity. So um, Nick, let's get started with uh, our, our story here. How, just as an overview, um, we, we have a unique situation where Nikki and I, well, you know what, why don't I let you start, Nick? Why don't you start from the beginning and then people can hear, hear the story as we go. Go ahead. Okay. <laughs> um, so yeah, Ken, we, we do have a unique story. And again, thank you to the state. I echo everything you said. Um, just to, by way of brief background, uh, I, I can remember as early, my earliest memories, I, I had anxiety much like I have today before this, uh, this presentation. And then when I was 14, I perforated my stomach lining and needed life-saving surgery. And as I was closest to death before the surgery, finally, my fear of death and my anxiety and all of, you know, my phobias went away. And it was unbeknownst to me because I had, you know, opioids flowing through my veins by the way of anesthesia. Um, and that kind of set the path. I had multiple health problems and also utilized other substances as, as you know, during my neurological development. And I did tremendous damage. I did not develop coping skills. I did not develop emotional regulation. And because I had this, you know, kind of cognitive distortion on who could get substance use disorder and what it meant, it led to me not seeking treatment or being able to avail myself to treatment for a long time until I finally met you at CPC, where again, as our name speaks, we have integrated person-centered care. And that was that was the difference of my journey. So your story is an impressive one and you'd been through a lot and that led you to CPC. So tell us a, a little bit more about the, the next phase of what happened. And I know from when I met you, it was impressive to me how much you'd been through. We know recovery is a process, but you really were an example of a lot of the ups and downs that uh, people can experience. So here we are. You came to CPC. And what next? Yeah, so I, I came to CPC in 2007 after I tried to end my life and it wasn't necessarily because I wanted to die, but just couldn't stand another day living as I was. And sadly, I couldn't on my own figure out another way to live. Um, like many other people with untreated and undiagnosed mental health disorders, I had interactions with various systems. So I was a practicing attorney. I lost my law license, which meant I lost any ability to earn income. I was a mom. I had four beautiful children. Uh, I lost custody of them and eventually had a no contact order placed. So I had no connection. Um, I was involuntary committed numerous times. I went to jail for a while. I started having seizures and I had a uh, a closed head injury and needed a life-saving craniotomy, death in my left ear. I had no sense of smell. I overdosed. I was saved by Narcan. So kind of everything. And along those ways, I had been sentenced to treatment. Go get better. Go do this. Go do that. But again, I, I wound up in the same place I was because they were addressing kind of the end result rather than the beginning, like we did at CPC. So for example, in the other treatment, they would say, you can't be screened for psychiatric disorders until you haven't been on drugs for six months. Well, I couldn't get off drugs for six months until my psychiatric tree. So yeah, that was it. So when I came to CPC, um, I had again been involuntarily committed after I tried to die by suicide and I went to IOP. And frankly, at this point, I had nothing. I had no insurance. I had no car. Car. I didn't had no license. And um, I guess it's that theory, Ken, that when we break people, they hit their bottom and they recover. But I met you and I engage with CPC where it's the opposite. It's as though we build people up. We don't break them. We highlight their strengths. We go to what they have in their favor. And then maybe I'll let you pick up <laughs> our first session when <laughs> we kind of began our journey, what, 16 years ago. So, but, but as you said, it was, it's an impressive story. Here you are, the successful lawyer, family, you know, nice home, Monmouth County. And now 
serious situation with substance use, mental health, and that's what we're used to at CPC. But it's still even you know it was it was a big challenge ahead of us together. And um, if I remember correctly, you you had you you started an IOP and then you really uh, wanted to get into some more issues, so we started an individual therapy. Correct, right? And we really exactly. Well, yeah, yeah. I, I, oh, sorry, go ahead. No, you go ahead. Oh, yeah. So I, I was in IOP and I guess it was like 60 or 90 days with no substances. I was doing everybody said, going to my meetings, doing everything I possibly could, Ken. And I still, on most days, wanted to die, felt nauseous, felt I was dying, and I wasn't doing well. So I decided, let me go back for individual counseling. And then that's when when you and I, I had, you know, met you a couple times at IOP, where I should mention too, in IOP, we would have guest speakers come in on something like I'd never forget the man on nutrition. Here I was, an attorney, um, you know, my doctorate, but I never understood the, you know, kind of complex relationship between physical and mental health, Ken, what we eat and how it impacts us, our pain levels, our, you know, again, I had a lot of health problems. And so it was amazing how much I got from IOP. And because of my experience at IOP, I said, let me let me call and get an individual appointment. And then that's, that's when you and I met. Well, and I'm glad you highlighted that because that's when I started at CPC in 2001. And it's one of the things that drew me to the, to the agency was the integrated care model. Now everybody's on board with that, thankfully, but we were, uh, you know, it was in 2001, it was more of a, an innovative idea, you know, to let's treat the whole person. Um, the mental health, the substance, and also you brought in physical health and all the case management and wraparound services, which really were part of your story as well, which our story, but really it's, it's great. But I mean, it's really your story. And I was just grateful to be just a part of it. But uh, so let's get into our relationship as far as, you know, what, what we started to get into when we were working closely together one on one. So, uh, again, a, a couple things that stand out when I first met you and began talking, um, there were a couple things like there was a different level of engagement. It wasn't like a 20 minute session where I had had before. It was, it was, can't even just say authentic engagement. And so Ken, I remember I, in the beginning, I wasn't being completely honest with you and I'd go in there. And at some point I felt comfortable being honest. And as we talk more, I remember I would share with you the racing thoughts I had. And you mentioned something like, have you ever tried thought stopping? And I remember being like, if I could thought stop, I wouldn't be here. But you didn't just say thought stop you taught me how to thought stop. You engage with like CBT skills, DBT skills. I remember the emotional credit card story. Don't don't return the volley and the, and the game is over. Uh, distraction, all of these healthy ways that again, despite being educated, I wasn't aware of, of that level of emotional intelligence again, because I began using substances at 14 and I had no real development of them. And then you know, we, we did a little bit of that. And then the fateful day, I never forget when you asked me how, how I was doing with my medication. And I said, what medication? Right. Uh, yeah. And that's where we, we, we really got you involved with, uh, the whole, the psychiatric part as well, which was, it was, but I, just to go backwards, the, th some of the things you mentioned, uh, again, were, uh, to me, uh, something I was, kind of raised with here at CPC, that, that integrated care model in, ter in terms of uh, starting where the person is and engagement and, and uh, working with it, things from there, using evidence-based practices as well. And it's like, it's just so, it's, it's great for me to hear now how you uh, talk about how those things worked. You know, you always want to, you know, you, you wonder, is this stuff really helping people? And, and, and in your case, it absolutely did. And the case of many others, fortunately, but having you now as a colleague, it's, we get to reflect on how, how these approaches really work. There's a reason they're evidence-based, you know, it's things like CBT, DBT, motivational interviewing, you know, working with uh, your inter intrinsic motivation and kind of drawing that out of you, you know, there's a reason we we're, we're, we're taught all these things because this stuff, this stuff works. So the, then we get into the integrated care. So we, we got you, you, had, you, you we, we were talking about your, your substance use issues and we realized there's a lot more going on than when it comes to that. And why don't you go ahead and say how things went from there? 
Yeah. So again, you were coming with a very different perspective. And so you mentioned medicine and I, I had no idea what you're talking about. And I remembered at this point, I was being honest. I was trying so diligently to, you know, be the perfect client and get well. All I wanted to do is get well. And you said psychiatric medicine. And I remember what I heard I internalized was there's something wrong with her. She's broken. She needs care. And I had no idea that that would probably more than anything else be the life-saving moment of my journey. And then you mentioned, you know, how was I not seeing a psychiatrist? Because again, this is what you had done. I had been, I was 35 years old, multiple commitments, treatments, and never really saw a psychiatrist. So what you did, I never forget this. You literally like, get, we're going and walk me down. We made an appointment with Dr. Scott and I've been with Dr. Scott forever. And again, that night there was a sadness. There was a fear because I never had on my radar that I had a mental health challenge. But again, Ken, that was the beginning. It took the demand for the substances away. And I remained with you until we be, until the conflict got me out of there. But uh, I remained for you for the next 10 years to work on the whole person, to realize that the substances were how I was dealing with my underlying issues, not the issue. And that's where the growth really began. But yes, it was so amazing because, again, I didn't have a car. I couldn't drive back. I couldn't make another appointment. I wouldn't have followed through, Ken. It wouldn't have happened. And, and literally, you put me in Dr. Scott's hands. And then the two of you have known each other longer than you and I have known each other. So there was, again, that talking, hey, I'm seeing this with Nikki. Hey, I'm seeing that. What's going on? And, and again, just the, um, kind of what we have, integrated care. Yeah, I, I, I'm glad you brought that up as far as, you know, you in your advocacy work, you talk a lot about stigma. And it shows how the, the prevalence of stigma. Here you were in substance use treatment. And at that point in your life, you're like, well, mental health care, you know, that, that means he, th he thinks I'm quote unquote crazy, you know? So, and where in true integrated care, you know, getting that mental health care is, is it's in the water. It's part of what we do. And it's, there's nothing, uh, nothing to be uh, ashamed of or, or stigmatized over. So it's great that, that we, we brought those pieces in as well. And I remember in, there was other pieces as well. Some of the family things, if you want to, and the trauma, if you want to bring those in, go ahead. I want you to... Right. So again, when I came to you, there was no contact order. I wasn't even allowed to speak with the children on the phone. And although I was sentenced to recovery court, drug court at the time, and I was, you know, having UDS with you to prove I was, again, a stigmatizing word clean to implicate I was dirty at some point and unworthy, uh, I still wasn't allowed to see my children. And that was just so difficult. And I remember we set out a plan. I, you know, as a previous attorney, I decided to make a motion with the court. But then I used to say I got my children back, but now I say they got me back. But Ken, that opened a whole nother door. I had never been a single mother. I had not, never been a mother without substances. And of course, the damage that they had suffered. At that point, as you know, I have triplets. So the triplets would have been just around eight. The baby, who's now 20, was was five at the time. And um, they had very brief counseling through the division. But uh, I had come into counseling one time and was saying what, what a horrible time I was having, how horrible I felt. And you mentioned, would you consider calling mobile? And I remember being like, mobile, what's mobile? And it was another aha, kind of go see Dr. Scott moment. Yeah. And I, re I remember having a lot of empathy for your situation, you know, again, newer in recovery, been through so many things. And now here you have to have uh, care for triplets and the younger, you know, four kids, you know, and alone, you know, co-parenting, but mostly your custody. And uh, it was, it was fortunate that we were able to, to link you with more, again, treating the whole person with, Mobile, uh, children's mobile response for the kids, some parenting, and and uh, we did some other things as well. Remember the um, the uh, the trauma issues. If you want to bring tell, talk about that, 
Yeah, that was another thing. Because of, you know, I I came from a quote unquote good family. I didn't even understand what trauma was. And I used to think back, do I have regressed memories? Like what made me be like I am? There had to be something wrong. And I remember you were talking about trauma and you mentioned to me, you know, I almost died at 14. I had shared some things about, you know, my marriage with you. You pointed out how much trauma I had been through. And I always thought that trauma couldn't be something you brought on yourself. I had been through trauma with being incarcerated and having my law license stripped and being committed and in four point restraints. And so you suggested I go to a women's women's meeting where I met another who is now colleague Linda. And uh, I began to explore that the living in chronic trauma and abuse. Again, I thought that I wasn't, I couldn't have been abused because I brought it on myself. And as I slowly began to change that schema, that's where the real recovery had had been. And at that point, it was four or five years, Ken, from my last opioid, but we were just getting into the thick of things. So it was amazing. Like I felt like every time something new arrived, there was something, and I attribute it to you and CPC, but in this model, then this is what we do. We go here, we do this. And then of course we had, you know, I, I, the children, I had full custody back. I had processed a lot of my trauma, but Ken, now I'm a disbarred attorney. Tragically, my parents passed away and they were our main, they were my best friends, but they also provided tremendous financial resources. And here I was with nothing left to do. And that that is where CPC stepped in again. So yeah, being that we're speaking to a lot of treatment providers here, like in summary, you know, you br- we brought in so many points about what we're really doing with you know to help people, you know, with opioid use disorders and and really all the people we face. But as far as um, you know, treating the mental health, you know, integrated care, and the other issues, you know, all the social determinants of health, family and trauma, and then we even worked, you know, how it got you helped get you some social connections and for your kids as well, and making sure you're, you're making it to your doctor's appointments. And of course, medication and medication-assisted treatment. Now we say MOUD, medications for opioid use disorder. You know, Putting all the pieces together in an integrated way with the communication, the collaboration, the coordinate, all those things, everybody talking, working together, a team, Team Nikki, together to help you be the success, which again, you did the work, of course, but we were there as a team to support you. And again, I'm so grateful that I got to be a part of that. So as a, you know, summarizing that up, let's talk about where you are today. That, cause that's the real, like this, that's what takes this to the next level. So you did all these things you know, with the whole person care, the integrated care, and here you are. It's God, let me, you, I'll, I'll take it off to you now. Yeah. So again, I came into counseling and mentioned to you that the expungement law changed and anyone who graduated from at the time drug court would be entitled to an expungement. And if I could get an expungement, I could finally, I couldn't be a lawyer again, but I could do what I wanted to do most. Be you, Ken, be my hero. You you talked to me and you treated me for the first time in my life like a human being, not like a client. And that made me want to become a helper. And so I applied to different schools. I was accepted into Monmouth University. I went back and got my master's of science with a clinical, um, a master of science in clinical mental health counseling. And as you know, I slowly became a, you know, licensed counselor and licensed clinical alcohol and drug counselor. And in talking to you, I, I realized to your point, all of these evidence-based things that at the time I, I didn't know what they are, I now use today. I use to meet the people I serve. I say the same things you said to me, things I, I've I, learned. I can hear you I, saying them all the time. You're, yeah, you're, it's exactly. Amazing, it's amazing to watch. Right. Immediately get, make sure that someone is having their, you know, basic needs met. And just again, it, this is this is a really sad part of the story for me, but um, when I became an intern, as you know, we ended our our relationship as you know counselors, and um, it was a it was a metamorphosis of kind of what integrated care does. I started here, and I developed all the different domains with all the different supports, and here I was now an intern and now a full time you know employee, but part of a team. 
part of a team, Ken, when you and I work together and I literally can look at somebody and say, I know you think your life might be ending, but it's not. And I have the scars to prove it. We will get through this. This is what's going to happen. And, you know, now you and I, Ken, we talk about people that we serve together and and bring this, again, evidence-based and what I just call like, it, it's, it's proven, it's life-saving model to others. And it, it's, it's just been amazing. Yeah. Taking you, getting you at, as starting with the internship to me, it was like a gift. It was like such a, to see this, someone grow like that, you know, uh, having you when COVID happened, remember uh, we had to scramble to cover the groups. I came and was covering one of the groups and you happen to be the intern there. And we, we ended up doing it for quite a, quite a while together, together, co-facilitating group. Who would have thought, you know, that was, that was unbelievable. And so here you are today, you know, uh, working at CPC, a master's level counselor licensed. And I know you have, you know, you do so much advocacy work and you do so much for so many people. You've taken it even a level farther. Why don't you, uh, because this is really your story. It's an amazing story. And I think a lot of people here watching, you already know you because you're out there doing this work. So tell us a little bit more about now. So you went from, again, from client to intern to counselor, you know, started out, you know, case management, moving up. Now here you are full-fledged in the field, experienced, and even doing so much more. Yeah, so this is kind of one of the things that I, I really love. I'm a licensed special counselor, licensed kind of alcohol and drug counselor, but I'm also a peer recovery specialist now, and I love that. Um, I do a lot of advocacy work. So, for example, very recently, there was uh, some talk about moving peer recovery from the CERT board to the state, and they want criminal background checks. Well, guess what? In theory, until I got my expungement very recently, I wouldn't qualify to be a peer specialist. And so what I do, like kind of similar to what we did with the expungement law, I advocate to remove barriers, uh, legislative policy, different things that stop people from getting well. Again, that are in this idea that if we just excommunicate you, if we put you out to pasture, if we shame you, if we break you, you will change. That is not what we need to do. We need to scaffold people and raise them up. And I, I always say this, I'm not, my story isn't unique. There are so many people like me that may not have had the scaffold, that may not have had the Ken and the CPC. And so that's kind of what I see is this um, utopia of wellness where we have integrated care, where therapists know sometimes if all I do with somebody is get on the computer with them and get them food stamps, that is evidence-based too. And so meeting people where they're at can, again, my one of my favorite stories was when you mentioned your family. Um, we were talking about being at the boardwalk and you, you mentioned that you're at the boardwalk with your kids. And I remember thinking, he has children. He just told me about his family. He's not afraid I'm going to go and, you know, find out where he lives. I had never been treated like that. And so this idea of self-disclosure, again, when it is in the benefit of people, but to be able to say to someone in IOP, like you and I used to do, like he was my counselor. When I tell people, I sat in this very room for IOP 13 years ago, you will be on the other side of this table. It is, uh, again, it's just so cathartic and it gives hope. And I'm glad you said that about mentioning that there's others, you know, to wrap this up, I know we're, we're running out of time. You know, your, your story is amazing. And I know you always give a lot of credit or whatever out, but really the potential was always in you and we just helped kind of bring it out. But that, that fact that you're bringing out, there's other people as well. And everyone deserves that chance to unlock that potential. And it's not just about stop using drugs and, and it's about so much more about get the full care and, we see, like you said, there's many, many others who are really benefiting from the growth that this field has had. You know, it used to just be, you know, don't do drugs, go to meetings. And now it's so much more. And we're seeing the benefits. And you're really an example uh, for so many people. And, and you're an inspiration. So, again, uh, uh, thank you to, to DMHAS and, and to everyone listening. And uh, we're, we're really grateful to have to be able to do this. And uh, Nick, I'm so glad. I can only wait to hear what we you know, see, witness what you're going to do next because you're still you're doing so much, and and uh, it's been just great to be a part of it. So, 
And again, thank you, Ken. And I'll close on this. You know, I am diagnosed with major depressive disorder, generalized anxiety disorder, and obsessive compulsive disorder. So I live with mental health, profound mental health disorders every day. And what I love the most about CPC is it's not just, you know, we call it a model, but it's a living it's a living being. They have welcomed me with my challenges and we use them to my advantage, Ken, to our advantage, to help others. And so I think that it goes to show that there is a place for everyone to be well, especially when we do it together. It truly takes a village. And uh, yeah, Ken, I look forward to our future too. <laughs> I'm so grateful to you, CPC, to DMOS, and to everyone listening. Just know, I know sometimes a therapist, I, I think like, how, what can I do better? How am I failing? But Ken and I, I often mention things that he did or he mentions things that I said. And we, we don't even realize because the, the impact you can have on a person sometimes isn't seen immediately. It's planting seeds or years later. Here we are, Ken, 16 years later, and every moment I spent in your office at CPC mattered. So again, thank you so much. I, I'm so grateful. Well said. Thank you.